Good evening. I'm John Bailey, and this is People to Be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. And tonight, you've got Dr. Farouk Jaffrey, co-director and board-certified emergency medicine physician at the new White Plains Hospital Medical and Wellness Facility in Armagh, New York. It's, it's only been open for about four weeks Absolutely. when we're doing this interview, and is the first and only hospital owned and operated urgent care facility in Westchester County. And Dr. Jaffrey, you are here to talk to parents and adults about the flu. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having me here. Oh, it's a pleasure. It. Dr. Uh, Jaffrey is a native of Ardsley. He's a homegrown Westchester County physician. He's Absolutely. now practicing at White Plains Hospital. A real a local guy, local care. As local as local care gets, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And first, thank you for taking your time to speak to us. What is the present situation on flu in Westchester County? Well, you know, right now it looks like it's getting a slow start, but the last two years, particularly in White Plains, we've seen a very heavy flu season, a lot of sick individuals coming in. And so I think the slow start is possibly secondary to our unseasonably warm weather that we've been having. But now that in January is getting quite cold, Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we should be expecting a very heavy flu season again this year. Really? So cold enhances the spread of flu? Yeah, I mean, the virus is spread more easily in the cold, dry weather than it is in the warm weather. They're thinking maybe when it's warmer, it's more moist. Um, it's aerosolized. You know, you sneeze, you cough. The virus is, is a more of a respiratory virus. Mm -hmm. And so when you cough, it spreads, you know, further away in the cold weather than it does in the, in the warm weather. That's why we tend to see it more in the colder climates, generally around October through March, but right now we're starting to probably start seeing more around January, February. What are you expecting in dealing with flu season this year? Are the strains more vicious? Uh, you know, we all, we'll find out at the end of the year. You know, it's hard to predict um, before. You know, the CDC, the last two years, we've been seeing two different types of strains, uh, you know, H1N1, H3N2 which are the two types of influenza A and B. Influenza, flu is generally spread into two different categories. There's flu A, there's flu B. Flu A is the more common one that we tend to see. And um, what does that characterize? And in terms of symptoms? Yes. Usually, you know, what we, the main thing is it's usually abrupt and onset. You know, you have an abrupt onset of symptoms and it lasts between five to seven days. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms are, come, are spread into two different components that we like to think about. There's a respiratory component, which is cough, nasal congestion, sore throat. And they're constitutional symptoms, which means the whole body's involved, which includes things like fevers, body aches, illness, yeah. weakness, these type of things. And it's not uncommon for people to have headaches and body aches and those type of things also. Mm -hmm. And the B? And B is very similar to that too. Um, and so both influenza A and B, you know, they're both very uh, exaggerated viral syndromes. These are self-limited illnesses, but they can, you know, predispose people to worsening illnesses such as pneumonias that we get concerned yeah. about. It's, it's, but so right now you do not know whether this, this this year's flus are going to be stronger and more medical resistant. Have they been gaining strength or resistance? No, we haven't really seen too many resistant strains. Um, you know, we'll see what it is at the end of the the season. Um, but you know, at White Plains Hospital and here at Armonk, you know, we're fully prepared to get everything underway. You know, we're one of the busiest emergency departments in Westchester County. We are the busiest emergency department in Westchester County, and we open up this Armonk facility to further our, our outreach for patients. We have, you know, our urgent care facility here. We have pediatricians. We have primary care uh, availability here. So we want to be able to, you know, get more community outreach and help more with the prevention of the flu mm -hmm. than the treatment. Because really, the more efficacious things are in terms of the flu is really all about prevention. Mm -hmm. Now prevention, we have been bombarded and rightly so by the health department about getting flu shots. Absolutely. Even I got one this year. Good. And um, I was just wondering, the flu shot protects you completely. It doesn't, it's not full protection. And you know, the question is how good the flu shot is. Last year it was not as fully matched and we'll see what it is this year. But even, and what that means, right? So influenza A, it does get a little bit com complicated, but there are almost 170 different types of strains that can be called influenza A. So what they do is they cover the two most common ones. Mm -hmm. And that's what the flu vaccine is. The question is, will it match appropriately or will it not match appropriately? Mm -hmm. And so when it matches, it's quite good, especially in children. It's very good. 
Uh, but even if it's not a complete match, it still offers protection. And that's really the best preventative measure that you can have to get and the flu. It makes it flu not as serious. As it you it makes the flu not as serious. Yeah. And it, once you get your flu shot, it takes about two weeks for you to have resistance. So if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, you should really consider getting your flu shot yeah. shortly now that the cold weather has really kind of taken into effect. We're taping in the first week of January. Okay. All right, so, All right. so get your flu so shot. So get that flu shot now, folks. Now, uh, has the public heated Department of Health Wellness Advisors to get flu shots? Are vaccinations up? I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, or have, have, has the public heated um, the... I believe so. I mean, shots? you know, I think um, it's not very common that I see people uh, unvaccinated. Um, the few, I have seen some flu this year, mm -hmm. um, and the two flu cases I have in the hospital were both patients that were not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but for the most part, you know, I see people, you know, coming to the emergency department. Of course, I have a very skewed population. People coming to urgent care and emergency departments, these are not primary care measures. But, you know, the people that I'm seeing are vaccinated for the flu and people are coming into our urgent care facility and getting their flu vaccinations. Now, according to the New York State Health um, reports, the last, the last two weeks, the last week of December and this week, have been somewhat slow. It hasn't really hit in full swing the flu yet. Yes. So you you're waiting for this onset. Of the you know flu. we have to be prepared. Yes. And you know while I hope that we don't get hit hard, I hope that we have a very mild flu season. We have to make sure that we prepare for the worst. I mean it was 72 degrees Christmas Eve, and so uh, wasn't it? Yes. It exactly. was. So I'm hoping that uh, you know my my assumption is that it's going to be a delayed flu season this year. Now who should get a flu shot? So, you know, we recommend everybody getting a flu shot above the age of six months. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, you go to your primary care provider, you go to a health professional, you go to a pharmacy, we have it available in our urgent care facility over here too. But we re really recommend everybody getting a flu shot unless you have a clear contraindication, such as a severe egg allergy or if you had a bad reaction to it in the past, mm -hmm. or if you've had a rare uh, illness called Guillain-Barre, in which case you should have a conversation with your primary care doctor in regards to that. Yeah. Now, how do you distinguish the flu from a severe cold? So, you know, they have very similar mechanisms, right? Yeah. It's all respiratory, so, you, you know, the flu spread through aerosolized droplets. So when it you know, comes to the nose, you'll have a stuffy nose, you'll have a sore throat, you'll have a cough. These are also seen in the cold, mm -hmm. uh, in a common cold. But, you know, things that differentiate it is the abrupt onset of it, the body aches, the illness, the fevers. Oosh, comes on you like a ton of bricks. And so pretty much the way that we differentiate, there's a respiratory component and there's a constitutional component. Of course, you could have a fever with the cold too, but the, you know, the severity of the illness, yeah. the constitutional symptoms of it is really what differentiates the flu. I mean, you can function with the cold, but you can't function with the flu. Yeah, a lot of times... A way of definition. Well, but sometimes with the severe... We've seen milder cases of the flu, but yeah. certainly severe flu uh, mm -hmm. can leave one very debilitated. Um, Absolutely. Now, when should a parent take a child to an urgent care facility as opposed to an emergency room or a hospital or a wellness center like Westman? Okay, well, you know, it depends on the severity of their illness. It depends how ill the child looks. Certainly high fevers, ill-appearing child, difficulty breathing, very lethargic, you know, not urinating. These are all indications that this is more of an emergency. Mm -hmm. And that, in that case, the child should be sent to the emergency uh, department. Is, is dehydration? Uh, yeah, yeah, dehydration, possible. mottled skin, basically not eating, not drinking. And a lot of times you could count the diapers if, you, if the child's very young, of course. Yeah. Um, and if you feel like the child's not urinating, not making up wet diapers, these are all certain, you know, things that are a concern. No. But it's all about how the child looks. Some, you know, all parents can attest they've had children and having 103 fever who are running around in circles. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you could have a child with 101 fever that doesn't look very well. So it really is, uh, we find that uh, parents' gestalt is actually quite good in terms mm -hmm. of uh, how ill their child appears. Mm -hmm. If your child uh, appears well, has a fever, there's some congestion, and you're concerned, of course, that that's. Just, you know, you bring them to the urgent care center, bring them over here to Armonk, we can evaluate your child, uh, your, your pediatrician, absolutely, either of these will be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how about an adult? When should the, an adult go? So, you know, in, to an emergency department versus an urgent care yeah, center right. versus, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really depends on, one, it's a similar, um, you know, backflow. It, it, if you're very ill appearing, if you're very weak, uh, nobody's gonna feel great when you have the flu, you're gonna feel terrible. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, if you're very short of breath, if you're very fatigued, if you're not eating, not drinking, of course, come to the emergency department, particularly if you have a lot of comorbid conditions. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing about, you worry about influenza, influenza is a self-limited condition. Five to seven days, you should heal, you'll be a little bit fatigued afterwards. Mm-hmm. But it can result in pneumonias, and it can, and in very severe cases, it could cause some very difficult, uh, if you have COPD or bad asthma, it can exacerbate your underlying pulmonary disease. Mm-hmm. If you have underlying immunodeficiencies, if you're a cancer patient on chemotherapy, if you have diabetes, these are all conditions that we get concerned about. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're um, younger, under the age of two, if you're older, over the age of 65, or if you have any comorbid conditions, you should come to an emergency department and have yourself evaluated. Excuse me, what kind of conditions again? Comorbid. So comorbid meaning diabetes, yeah, respiratory okay. symptoms, okay. severe asthma, congestive of heart failure under, if you're undergoing can, uh, chemotherapy for any cancers. Mm-hmm. Now, what can a parent of a child or an adult coming in for treatment of themselves expect when he or she brings a child or themselves to see a doctor at the urgent care center here? Well, I mean, how, they, they, how do they treat you? Uh, so it's, you know, it's all a viral condition. We want to make sure there's nothing more going on. Uh, we want to make sure that you're not dealing with a pneumonia. We want to assess your child's or your vital signs, make sure that everything's appropriate, your oxygen saturations are okay, that you're well hydrated. Um, and then, you know, the main measures about treat, the way we treat flus are really threefold. The first one is the flu vaccination, that's prevention. The second one is basic uh, measures such as, and they're very simple measures, but uh, things that we like to enforce. If you're sick, you know, don't go to work. Don't spread the virus because mm-hmm. it takes 24 hours once you're sick mm-hmm. to start um, shedding. And so once you're sick and you start getting symptoms after 24 hours, initially you may not be symptomatic, but you'll be spreading the virus. Um, and then so the main things are going to be, you know, cleaning your hands, making sure you're sneezing into a napkin, making sure you have some distance between other patients or other people. And then there, the third thing is the antiviral medication, um, which is something that you know patients always bring which up when they be? come to, which is really Oseltamivir, uh, the, uh, the brand name is Tamiflu, mm-hmm. which within 48 hours is the time frame based on the data to give this medication. However, um, Tamiflu does have significant, or Oseltamivir has uh, significant uh, side effects that we get I concerned see. about. There's no magic antibiotic. There's no antibiotic. Antibiotic is really more for bacteria infections yeah, and so what we do is within 48 hours if you come to the emergency department if you come to our mom if you have any significant comorbid conditions if you're under the age of two or the age of 65 um, or have any of these things that then at that point you know this medication is considered uh, appropriate mm-hmm. um, but if you're otherwise young you're otherwise healthy you appear well you have a mild case of the flu at that point you know the recommendation is really person dependent on whether or not this medication will be appropriate or um, and that's really a, c- a conversation okay. I like to have with you individually when you come and evaluate. So, so, well, since you have to go and start making some rounds, uh, is there any last thing you want to tell our viewers before we go to our next test about the flu? So, you know, be safe during the flu season. Make sure you ha- wash your hands very thoroughly. Please, please, please get the flu shot. If there are any concerns, if you're feeling unwell, come to our Armand Urgent Care facility. Go to your primary care doctor. We'll certainly be happy to evaluate you. But of course, you're very, very sick, very short of breath, feeling very fatigued. Go to the nearest emergency department. We want to make sure that we take this very seriously. Okay. Thank you very much for joining well, us. Thank you for having right. me. And now for the second part of our program, I'm joined by Francis Bordoni, Vice President of Business Development for White Plains Hospital. And she is here to talk about the first hospital designed and owned urgent care facility in Westchester County. It was conceived by uh, White Plains Hospital. And Ms. Bordoni, why did White Plains Hospital decide it wanted to create an urgent care center? So as the market has started to change and people are starting to need the health care at various hours during the course of the day and during the evening, it became clear that we needed to start to put that, those types of services in the community. And when we started to look at various locations for an urgent care center, um, we wanted to do it a little bit differently. Um, we actually have emergency medicine doctors that actually staff our urgent care center and we wanted to put it in an area where there would be ample parking as Mm -hmm. we know Westchester free parking free parking as well you're absolutely right Um, parking in Westchester is a challenge as you know and so it's free parking and and plenty of it thankfully Um, 
we saw this location um, about two years ago and thought this could be a great location for not just an urgent care but for a full imaging center as well as doctor's offices and in a way where people are feeling welcome to come here and obviously also have the ability to come in you know at those hours that your doctor's office usually is not open and what are the hours this is a very key point so when we thought about what the hours should be we decided on 3 to 11 to start most doctor's offices closing at 5 some urgent care offices are open until 7 or 8 p.m. and I quite frankly had I have had um, the examples of having to have my children who need health care and it's usually at 9 p.m. They are very inconvenient. At they the are. Times they get That's right. And they're right. inconsistent. And yes. so I've had to drive to other places to try to get them the urgent care that I feel that they need. Um, it's not an emergency medicine visit and so I'm not going to go to an emergency department but now it's here mm -hmm. and I live in the community and I can say that I think 50% of the patients who have come through the urgent care have been the moms and the residents of Armonk. I see, and you're located in the business center in Armonk right off Route 22. That's right. Right? Very centrally located right. on one of the few unjammed roads you can take, Route 22. That's absolutely and, true. And uh, so, did Monte Fior help you identify this need? since they moved into Westchester and became your partner. So as our partner, um, we had a discussion with them as to this is a thought that we had had and a plan and they came over to the site and they looked at it and thought this is a great location. It, it really is, uh, even though there's not a sign out there yet. Not yet. <laughs> like all towns, you always Which have some only challenges. Been out for a month. That's right. I, and as you can see, we already have patients um, all over the place, which is great. Yes, we're doing this interview at the uh, White Plains uh, Urgent Center, at the Business Center, uh, on January the 5th. And uh, so you've only been open about three and a half weeks. And, um, uh, a little bit more than that, I would say about five or six weeks. Five, or six weeks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, did the hospital feel there was something lacking in the present model of urgent care centers and um, medical feeder centers, such like a so WestMed, for example? Correct. Not that there's anything wrong with WestMed. There's absolutely nothing wrong. WestMed is there right. on our medical staff, as are several other um, medical groups. Mm -hmm. um, it was just what we thought was needed in the community it was a different type of urgent care. Yes. An urgent care that is staffed by our emergency medicine doctors. Emergency room accessibility, but without the anxiety and the Correct. weight. Correct. And yeah. the ability where if we feel that this is the visit you came in for really is not an urgent care visit, they are then calling the emergency department yeah. at White Plains Hospital, arranging for that transfer, that patient the hospital knows that patient is arriving mm -hmm. and they are taken care of pretty and quickly knowing that they've already been triaged here yeah. and that patient did in fact need an emergency uh, mm -hmm. visit rather than an urgent care visit. Or and that's a you great can allay the anxiety by giving Absolutely. them the treatment that it's needed. It's a good, Absolutely. good combination, sort of like combining two, uh, two birds with one stone, to use an old hackneyed expression, <laughs> but that's the great thing about cliches, that's right. they work. Uh, does it supplement, supplement or improve the public's options for first response to a received health problem? I, it absolutely yeah. does, absolutely. Um, thinking of where we're located, mm -hmm. um, there are certain things here that we have um, that people may often wait for. Mammogram, um, CT scans, MRIs, all of that is available right here. Mm -hmm. And so it, with all of that, people are not waiting for that sort of care. And so that, I think, is something that we are supplementing, as well as we're also thinking about doing things for just health and wellness and working collaboratively with the health clubs in the area mm -hmm. to do some more health and wellness type programs and education and awareness. Yeah. Now, what is different about the White Plains Hospital Urgent Care Facility in Armagh as opposed to a, a docks or an urgent center in the various cities that are cropping up all over the county and medical facilities like WestMed, for example? Or is there really no difference? But it's basically convenience, time and hours and... There's the convenience factor. There are the time and hours. There are some differences. Yeah. Again, what, what some of the places have are they will have family medicine physicians and or nurse practitioners. 
Um, again, we have our emergency medicine doctors. We have a nurse as well as we have medical assistants and medical and receptionists. So we have a pretty full staff mm -hmm. to care for those patients. Um, so there are similarities and, your and doctor, there are some differences. And your doctors are all from White Plains Hospital? Correct. Well. And so th those connections, so if there is a transfer and or admission, it's that continuity of care. That so there's a, not that fragmentation never happens. I agree with you. Continuity of care is really important because I have a family member who, some, who when he goes to an emergency room or something and they can't quite figure out what it is, they never consult That's his it. neurologist. And they, each neurologist at the hospital takes a stab at it. That's right. Terrible, terrible situation. So continuity is important. And does this supply a population White Plains Hospital felt was not being served? We believe that as we started to expand and started to look at the market share and look mm -hmm. at where there was a need, I personally live here, mm -hmm. and I felt that healthcare wasn't at my fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that it was something that was really important and so did the president and CEO Susan Fox and whether it be for Chappaqua, now Kisco, and I know now Kisco Medical Group is there, but just having that access and having it at your fingertips. Everything in Armonk from my perspective is at our fingertips, whether it be our supermarket and our gym, now we have our healthcare as well. What a concept, a 24 hour day health facility with, without waiting hours to get seen. That's right. Uh, now, um, is White Plains Hospital envisioning other centers like this in Westchester County? Um, or other counties? I think that we'll be starting to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, we just started, we just opened this, so yeah, sure. I'm sure that in time mm -hmm. we will start to look at what the other areas are within Westchester that we'll be starting mm -hmm. to think about doing this. And as a matter of fact, we do have something similar, minus an urgent care, in New Rochelle. Mm -hmm. that we opened in 2013 um, and it's a multi-specialty office it's two floors it's about 18,000 square feet we have an imaging center there as well we have mm -hmm. primary care doctors uh, a dermatologist endocrinologist um, nephrologist OBGYN we gastroenterology we have everything in the site and the imaging center is downstairs but this all is sort of linked to the the mothership here in White Plants Correct. And so, you, if you have to go someplace else for another, especially, it's, it's White there. Plains continuity. And it's the continuity into the hospital mm -hmm. when you need to have right. a test in the hospital that can't be okay. performed in an outpatient I come, setting. I come, I want to go to the urgent care center here. Sure, okay. absolutely. Um, how does one do that? Do you make a call? You don't have to wait for appointments either. You do don't you? even need to call. You don't. You just walk in. I walk in. Yes. Like a just, delicatessen. Yes. Um, a little bit different than the delicatessen, right. <laughs> exactly. but yes, you just walk right in. Mm -hmm. um, they register you, right. a nurse will meet with you, ask and for All insurance is accepted? All insurances are accepted. Accepted. It's with Medicaid or the uh, uh, Yes. I'm just, you not I, familiar I can't give you with the them list all. off the I'm top not, of my I'm head. I'm not but sick I, enough I, to be familiar with insurance, you know. I'm pleased right. to know that. That's right. It's be well, as they say. Um, now, um, let's see, you were going to show us some of the really interesting facilities we have around here. We call this Main Street, and the skylight is obviously a tremendous feature that has been able to bring natural light into the building. As I mentioned, this was a building that was a brick building that was on the dark side, and so to see that it came to this is really amazing. Um, and it's a very welcoming. So when patients arrive into our urgent care center, they register here. Um, and what registration means is they sign in and we don't take any information other than their name and their chief complaint and they are called to the back. The insurance information is retrieved after the visit. They're sick. We don't want to boggle them down with insurance information and getting all of that information up front. So this is a standard exam room in the urgent care center. What's special about this is that all of the information, all the equipment for your vital signs are actually up here and it's all electronic and it feeds into the actual electronic medical record. So somebody is not typing in the information um, as well as our scale. All of this feeds right into um, 
the electronic medical room. This is a procedure room in the urgent care center. Um, we did have a child who came in um, with a laceration and the child was stitched up here and mm -hmm. did very well and was able to go home shortly thereafter. As you can see, it's spacious so that the physician can mm -hmm. get around the table very easily. The electronic medical record, again, is there, as well as all the equipment to take the vital signs. Mm -hmm. The nurse is always available to work with the physician in order to make sure that the child and or patient is safe during the whole entire person. Scan here, and it's a 64 slice. Um, as you can see, it's right on the premises. It's available during urgent care hours, and um, it really is probably the only CT scan within a 10-mile radius. Mm -hmm. And this is the reading room here. Our radiologists are able to read the films um, very quickly and, and provide results. This being CT being a CAT scan for Correct. those not medically involved, right? Yes. Well, I, that was a lucky guess on my part. So this is our blood drawing area. So when the patient comes in here and has their blood drawn, the lab is actually taken to our White Plains Hospital lab, and the results are then uploaded into the same system that we use at the hospital that we use here so that the physician can immediately follow up with the patient with results from that lab. But how long does that take? Um, it depends on the type of lab that you're requesting. Yeah. Some can take it in a couple of hours, some can take a day. Mm -hmm. There's constant follow-up with those patients. Any patient that we see in the urgent care center, we follow up with them immediately the following morning mm -hmm. to give either instructions to follow up with another physician in the practice or to follow up with their primary care doctor and or to have additional tests based on blood test. So this is our actual viewing room where the radiologists sit here and they view all the films from MAMO to MRI to CT scan and Dr. Zimmerman is here and she can probably explain a little bit more yeah. as to what that means. Um, I'm reading MRI and uh, uh, mammography uh, today, so all breasts today up here. And there are two units that do that. This is devoted to mammography and has is very high resolution imaging. And then this is for MRI and everything else too which shows um, uh, um, all the computer 3D type imaging. This is our 3D memo, um, and it's something that most women over 40 need to do once a year, and it's great because of the fact that right now, um, we're right next door to the gym, and our hope is that as those women finish classes, maybe the 3D memo will be something that they will start to use here at my plane's arm. This is a 3D ultrasound, and for women who actually have dense breast, the 3D ultrasound is something that is very important for them to have um, during their visit so that the radiologist can see whether it's just dense breast or whether there's something else that might be mm -hmm. suspicious going on. So at this facility, the urgent care facility in Armonk, run by Boy Plains Hospital, you have many very sophisticated, top of the line, machines that Correct. can deliver in special circumstances. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also, you would make your appointment to come and do this sort of thing as well. These are the modalities that we actually offer to the community mm -hmm. because we also have physician practices on the other side. Mm -hmm. Well, we have been talking with Francis Bordoni, Vice President of Business Development and for White Plains Hospital, and she has been telling us about this fantastic new urgent care facility that White Plains Hospital has started in Armagh, the uh, White Plains Urgent Care, White Plains Hospital Urgent Care Center. It's right? the White Plains Hospital Medical and yeah. Wellness The long Center. name business. The long name business. That's right. That encompasses both urgent care as well as a full imaging center and physician practices. Right. So is there any last um, words that you want to say to the audience about the facility? Um, that we're open, we're here, and we would love to treat you and your family members um, with state-of-the-art equipment as well as top physicians um, in the Westchester County area. With evening hours? Evening hours yeah. um, for the urgent care from 3 to 11 we're opened, um, which is different than the hours of other offices um, as well as the imaging center. With, as well as on the weekends we're open from 9 to 9. Um, the parking is free and there's plenty of it. Uh, well, 
Francis Bordoni, VP of Business Development for White Plains Hospital, you have been heard. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining us on Peel to Be Heard. John Bailey, good night.